So Rackspace pays me to go and study the future and interview <laughs> tech executives all over the world. And uh, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I started seeing uh, five separate things that are going up exponentially, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sensors on us, around us in the world, yep. going up exponentially. Union Pacific, which is the big uh, railroad company in the United States, is putting sensors underneath the tra uh, train tracks mm -hmm. to listen to the cars going overhead. They're seeing 40 million hits a day yep. off of that, right? Uh, s social network data continues going up exponentially. There's mm -hmm. companies that study just when you say wine yeah. on uh, Twitter, right? Absolutely. And uh, we're seeing uh, new kinds of wearable computers that are generating a lot of data mm -hmm. and more on the way, a lot more on the a way. Lot, a lot more, yes. So w what part do you play in this new contextual Ab world where these things are fusing together to make new things possible, new, new capabilities like Google Now possible? Absolutely. No, thanks, Robert. And you know, this is a uh, great topic. I'm you know, thrilled to be here with and uh, chatting with you. You know, I think we, um, you know, we talk about you know the uh, you know software eating the world, the, the, the you know the evolution of software, but data, I mean, data is a sort of pervasive thing that's being generated. Um, you know, the, there's the old transactional data we always had. There's the machine data that now is being generated um, by every device, by you know er, um, thermostats, by roads, by bridges. Um, that it you know the the proliferation of that is just beginning. And then there's the third triangle of that. The Customer interaction data, web, mobile, social, explosion of that, and you know we we talk about this as the world of uh, multi-structured data. We're entering the age where the questions you really want to answer, you know, all so many of the folks here, I'm sure, are building devices, thinking about generating generating data as part of what they do, and thinking about maybe doing analytics on pieces of this. But the questions we see people trying to answer are now, how do you connect the dots? How do you make sense of my car telemetry connected to my marketing data to understand more about what people are doing and how they're behaving and how I can build better products and services and what failures look like and a hundred other interesting questions. And I think we're entering this age where this is what differentiates the winners and losers. And so we're building a, we built a software platform that's really built from the ground up for this new world of multi-structured data. It's sort of business intelligence in the modern age, Hadoop-centric, visual design for regular people to make sense of all of this and to answer these kind of questions very natively. You know, the best companies have data scientists, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, Amazon, t Twitter, yeah. uh, even Dig. But most of our businesses can't afford these new data scientists mm -hmm. who understand how to build a Hadoop cluster and then how to get a pattern off of the data. Yeah. What, what are the challenges in this new world where we're gonna be walking through fields of sensors Yeah. Uh, and generating these, you know, a, a new Chevrolet uh, generates 200 megabytes a second of yeah, data. Yeah, I mean, so how is how are you going to help the rest of us? Yeah, absolutely. See a pattern in this data where we can't afford the data scientists that uh, Facebook has. And to be, I mean, to dig that problem even deeper, you know, I was talking to someone about the uh, prediction that the average home might have hundreds or thousands of data generating devices in five years' time. You know, a factory might have millions. There's the, uh, the experience of a product or a service. I mean, the telemetry from the, from the application, from physical hardware. I mean, we're, we're swimming, we're w washing data. And I think we see, uh, I mean, every company we talk to uh, in this sort of data rich, but broadly insight poor understanding of what to do with that data is very, very, very low. And so there is this phenomenon we see where people see some of these Silicon Valley companies that have gone, and you know, I'm sure there are, this, this is a, there are companies globally that do this, but the very, very elite companies of, who have invested ahead of the curve in data scientists have these teams of statisticians and machine learning folks. And you see people saying, well, how do I get there? How do I go and hire up you know, my sh fair share of those people? Um, I kind of think of it almost like the pre-industrial age where before you had, you know, there, was a there was a point in time where if you wanted a f forks and knives, you would have a silversmith go and bang those out for you and you do them one at a time. And, if you predict the entire world's gonna need forks and knives, that's a whole lot of silversmiths. So everybody better become a silversmith. And all of a sudden, there was a machine that built you know, silverware. Uh, and I think the same thing is happening in this data science world where there's an elite role that some of those folks play for the very advanced use cases, but the basic sense making, kind of knowing what's going on, understanding the patterns of behavior, understanding what it's all about, you know, what your customer experience is, the journey, that shouldn't be something that you need those kind of people for. 
And so, uh, you know, we try to build our tool for every every business use, every business user, not for a special data scientist, special developer. Um, they all have their role to play, but you know, how, if you can't let the average the average subject matter expert, uh, the person designing your sensors, the person designing your products, the person studying your customers, if they can't make sense of the of behavior at this at these new scales, then you're gonna then you're gonna fail to uh, compete. So I think this is a prerogative for really every company to figure out. What are you, is, since you're studying a new customer base, you're, a, you're a building a new company, yeah. what are you seeing business people trying to do that they were not doing yeah. yesterday? Absolutely, uh, that's a great, great question. I think we, um, we, see, we see a lot of things. Um, you know, the, some of these are, are actually fairly uh, obvious questions that have been really hard to answer. You know, if you ask, if you think about simple questions like why, why do customers upsell or churn? You know, that's something that sounds so tantalizingly simple, but upsell involves hundreds of touch points or dozens of touch points, web, mobile, social, others that might affect behavior. And you need to sort of understand the bigger picture of how people engage with you to kind of know what might help or hurt that. Um, you know, machine data, you have, um, you know, you might want to understand failures, you might want to understand root cause analysis. But again, the example, you know, I think this is an, so intriguing one was a car manufacturer who was saying, I want to study this machine data for my cars because I want to know, you know, one is the car working right? Can I, how are people driving the cars? Can I build a better car experience? But also, can I market to you differently based on the, no, the way you drive your car? Can I know more about you and the way you behave? And that's not, I think then that's not meant to be a creepy thing. That's meant to be about being able to be more in touch with kind of who you are and well, when I when I visited Mercedes Benz R and D lab, they mm -hmm. showed me their new contextual car that they announced at the Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, and they're going to have sensors that are going to know who's in the car. Uh, well, let's talk about how. Yeah, uh, if you have an iPhone, you have a beacon in the phone, right? Yeah. Yep. So this radio is spitting out three number or could spit out three numbers a second. Yeah. And a sensor in the car sees that my phone is in mm -hmm. the car and yeah. knows that I'm in the driver's seat. Yeah. yeah. And my kids all have iPads or iPhones. Yeah. And they can uh, so the car knows that uh, they're in the seat. Or if I pick you up, then it knows you're in this car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I say pizza please, yeah the car will give me a different answer if my kids are in the car yeah. than if you're in the car. And the other side, you know, there's things like insurance, where people are now saying, can I look at the way you drive your car? And analytics on, you know, are you, do, are you being very jerky? Are, are we maybe using the collision detection and other telemetry about other cars on the road to say, you know, how risky are you as a driver? And can I give you a better rate because of that and use that data to build a better product? BMW is uh, working on self-driving cars, and so is Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to let you do things to the edge of traction, yeah. but they're not going to let you go over. Yeah, yeah. So uh, are you driving the ultimate driving machine, or is the car driving the ultimate driving machine? You're not going to know the difference uh, sometimes. Yeah, I think you better be awake for those few moments where it needs to be you, but because uh, otherwise... It could get interesting, but absolutely. So if yeah. we're a retailer or a business person yep. and we start thinking about beacons and we start thinking about sensors and we yeah. start thinking about maybe looking at our transaction data differently, yeah. we're learning from what Uber did, right? Mm. Uber is just data. Yeah, absolutely. It's the taxi didn't change. Well, it, it the, a, bit. a little bit, but not really. Not, not so much in Dublin, though. No, but. It's the data on top of the taxi that makes us think this company is radically different than what existed yeah. before. Yeah. So how do the people get started yeah, thinking about their business in a different way? I think there's, there's two sort of two sides of this from the context of machine data. There's, if you, there's one is if you're building products and services. Because if you're building a product that has the potential to generate data, then I, you know, I think you owe it to yourself to be Generating that data, capturing that data, tell, it'll help you know so much more. You know, the, when, gener when GE um, realized that that data, that those, those 10,000 sensors in a jet engine, um, that could, isn't just data that tells you interesting things about servicing. That enabled them to create a new business model where they could essentially lease you the uh, jet engine and uh, use that telemetry to, to lower their serv servicing costs and create a new business model. I think we'll see that in so many different areas where the data you generate from the devices helps enable the experience. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think more broadly, I think you've got to look at this, I think, more holistically than, I think a lot of people either say, well, I want to go stick this data in my old little data warehouse and I can look at it as one little silo and I can 
poke around and see how my you know, thermostat or light beacons are behaving. Um, but if you think about it in that multi-structured context, you think about, I'm trying to understand customer journey across transactions, customer interactions, machine data, or I'm trying to understand uh, fraud, or I'm trying to understand um, uh, product experience, then I think you owe it, to, owe it to yourself to sort of collect, st one, sort of collect as much of that raw material as you can. And I think what we see people doing is landing that in open source Hadoop, Hadoop being the open source technology that really lets you sort of land all this raw material without having to figure out ahead of time what you want to do with it, just sort of land it as a very, in a very cost-effective way. Um, and then begin to use, and then it's imagination. What kind of questions would you really like to answer when you start to weave these together? Uh, and how do you go beyond just drawing pretty pie charts and the obvious stuff and start understanding behavior? Not, not necessarily even prediction, but just understanding behavior and kind of parse behavior and be able to segment and understand customers or devices better. And that's where, you know, we play a big role at Platfora, um, but I think just broadly we see that as a trend that everybody in the industry is trying to get to. When, when I do my normal talk on, on this contextual stuff, a third of the hands go up at, at the end when I ask them, are you freaked out by this world? Because <laughs> we're heading into a world where we're going to be continually surveilled. We're going to wear sensors on our skin that are going to tell us mm. all sorts of things that we don't even know. You yeah, know yeah. Uh, Samsung told me they're building a sensor that knows uh, your blood glucose level just mm -hmm. by watching the color of your skin. Yep. And then These uh, things are going to know us at a much deeper level than we I e might even know ourselves. I love the, the announcement by, uh, I think, Google, Google X project where they're, you can inject these little ion particles that can detect cancer, and then your smartwatch can be telling you in real time if you have any cancer cells, which is uh, pretty crazy. So when people get freaked out by the future, yeah. they ask p people like you to help protect yeah. their privacy. Sure. How are you thinking about privacy uh, or security inside your systems to yeah. help business people make sure that they uh, 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 stay not just in regulation compliance but yeah. human compliance? Right? So it's a really good question. And look, honestly, it's a, this is an industry-wide conversation. I think we and it and it and you see different perspectives on this, at different a, different age brackets and different countries, because the, the the tension is you can say I want the maximum of privacy, and that means you know, all of my data is completely siloed. That means I don't get the benefit of any shared pooling of data for medical prediction. I don't get um, any, um, you know, experiences customized to who I am. And there's none of the benefit of the cross use of data. And then the other extreme is, you know, there are definitely plenty of folks out there who are less scru scrupulous with that data and where they're using that data in ways that, get, that are creepy. And, and if you knew what they were doing, it'd be even creepier. And I think that, um, you know, we, uh, one is we build software that can be used uh, by hopefully by responsible companies to do that, uh, but I think broadly as an industry we see, uh, I think that um, a good debate happening on the right the right line there, and I think that we all we all have a stake in this, but I think it's one where the line is evolving as a you know as we learn more about the potential, so it isn't something that's in s is locked in sand, but I do think we uh, you know we it isn't it, there's no magic silver bullet answer because I think yeah. we uh, there's a lot of there's a lot to gain as much to, as much as there is to lose in this in this new new age so uh, let's say we put a, 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 a standard sensor a camera sensor on the front door of our business there's yeah. a, a company called IM2 SRV yeah. that uh, will look at your face with a standard se a camera and know your age mm -hmm. your your gender uh, your sentiment and maybe some other things soon uh, what how would you uh, get that data into your system, and how do we <laughs> make use yeah. of that as a new pattern or a new f feature that we can sure, offer? Sure. Well, let, let me, rather than that specific example, let's just generalize it. So somebody, yeah. somebody's generating new data, some new sensor, it's a factory production line, or a, you know, there's a new thermostat or something like that. And so typically, the, you know, whatever it is is generating f files of some kind. So the, you know, the different formats, it, XML, JSON, you know, Avro, there's, there's different raw formats and then there's ways of encoding within that. And so those files um, have to go somewhere. So we, you know, we, they, they get routed to Hadoop and they, get land, they land like files on a big hard drive, basically, but a very, very scalable, reliable one. Uh, and then through Platfora, you can, um, with a single click, kind of see, it'll try to look at that data set, figure out the format, and you can kind of guide it to sort of add it to the catalog of data that's available and then enrich it with more you know, either transformations or algor algorithms if you need to. 
and then it becomes part of the pool of data and the kind of collected link, link data you have available. So now when you want to ask a question, you can ask simple questions like how many times something happened by you know, slicing and dicing kind of BI, BI type patterns. But you can also ask about positive behavior, which is really interesting. So I want to look at when this, then this, then this happened, either look at the funnel chart of people who maybe got part of the way through that and then they dropped out because they didn't complete the process, or what was the golden path to get to some outcome so I can start to study behavior, the common behavior more deeply. Uh, and those are a lot of the really interesting kind of questions get answered that way. What, what kinds of mistakes are you seeing businesses make as they get into this new world where they have sensors doing things or uh, uh, new yeah. kinds of data coming in from phones and stuff like sure, that? Sure, yeah. I think, I think the two obvious ones, I think that the companies that are building devices, uh, I was at a dinner recently where there were 60, 60 people at the table. I think 50 of them were building different Internet of Thing devices. And when you ask any one of them, what are you doing with your data? Because they're generating these huge streams of data. It was kind of like this afterthought. We were putting it, you know, somewhere to maybe Hadoop or Cassandra or whatever it is, and then we got we draw some graphs and we have our own little analytics, and it was completely kind of cut off from the world, and so there was really no sense of like making that data part of a bigger picture. So I think that, you know, I think one is how do you enable you or your customers to to make that weave that data together and not just have it in little some little kind of bespoke little uh, silo. And I think on the other side, I think companies too often will sort of write off these kinds of data as being trivial. They're, the density of value is low, we don't know why it's useful, so like, hey, do we even need to store it? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe this stuff's useless, or uh, you know, if we store it, we can put it somewhere where you know, we can get it for, for like maybe archival regulatory purposes, but they're not um, making it part of the, um, the, the what, what's available for analysis. Um, and I think that, you know, I, li I like to think of this as sort of, you're generating, it's like raw earth, and raw earth has kind of these raw earth metals that are going to be incredibly valuable. And you, you don't even know what they are yet because they haven't even been identified. So the idea that you can kind of pre-distill out the stuff you care about from that data, that you can sort of chop it down and get to the things that matter, um, presume some foreknowledge that no, that's impossible. You know, you don't know what's going to be interesting. The, the detailed pattern down to the millisecond of the sequencing may tell you something about behavior down the road. or you can segment and ask something using some, arbit some way of segmenting devices that you never anticipated. Yeah. And if you don't have that raw material, you're, you're gonna lose. So I think that, that one, of the, I think one of the biggest problems we see is people who kind of aggregated early, threw away the raw material, and it's now like they mined out all the sort of the stuff they thought was interesting, and they realized they threw away all the iridium and all the really valuable stuff. When I talk to executives uh, uh, at companies, I say there's two imperatives for this new world. One is you better study everything about everything. Yeah. Uh, Uber is a great example. It, it knows where I'm standing. It knows where the driver is. Yeah. It knows our rating, right? The driver rates me yeah. as a customer and I rate the driver. Uh, so that's an, a complete change in how an employee is reviewed. Yeah. I get reviewed every six months. The driver gets reviewed every ride. Yeah. Um, and so if you're a business and not yet studying everything about everything, you're not yet in the modern world. Yeah. And the second thing is, we need to know much more about our customers. Yep. The Ritz tells me this, right? They used to have a room, when Ritz started 120 years ago, they used to have a room with index cards. Mm -hmm. And they would go through your trash 120 years ago yeah. to see what, you, what kind of candy bar you eat. And they would have the candy bar sitting on your pillow the next time you stay at the Ritz. Yeah. This was 120 years ago. I wonder if there were privacy conversations about that back then. It's interesting. But, uh, <laughs> and they're going to do it again because yeah. we want them to serve us be yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. We, we want them to know our Facebook likes. We want them to know that we uh, like uh, Camus wine, right? Yeah. And, and on and on. And we want them to serve us better. Yeah, yeah. Where are you? Where are we going to take this world, and yeah. how can a normal business person get into this new world of, of a running their business like Uber runs their business? Yeah, I think, I think that the, there's a lot of, you can project out, and there's all kinds of sort of sci-fi like, um, you know, sort of omnipotent knowledge type scenarios that, you know, we can dream up. But I think that's, like, that a lot of that stuff, will be the, the places where these things will become more predictive and, and know us will become natural, I think, as, as they become available. I think that, you know, we shouldn't, I'm less worried about that than I think that the, the imperative of the everyday company to know, to know its customers, to know its products, to know how they're being consumed. I mean, you know, if you don't know 
um, your customers down to the ability to understand the, the paths of behavior through which they interact with you across all your channels, um, to know how your devices are being used. You know, uh, you know, we build our own software with this philosophy in mind. We get telemetry back, you know, uh, opt-in by the customer, but we get telemetry back that is a, it doesn't that's anonymized, but it, and it doesn't tell us about the, their data, but it tells like every new feature we see. Uh, we see every click, every path, we can understand how the feature's been consumed. If you don't know that, how do you know what, if your product's working or not? I think that's, that's okay. And that was our time clock, Absolutely. so thank you so much. Thank for you, Rolf. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for great. joining us. Okay.